And let's begin this episode from here, from Skiros. Am I ready? No, I'm not ready. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just for sinking purposes. Okay, it's. I think we are ready. I don't know if you can hear the songs playing around town since it's Easter Sunday today. Everyone has had lunch. Everyone has been eating like crazy, like me and Zoe. And now they are all dancing or <laughs> we are all ready to die from food. But anyway, I'm here not to talk about food or skiros or Easter. So let me check the notes. And the reason that I'm doing this, okay, there are some children playing in the playground. Maybe you can hear them. I hope you can so that you can hear only me and that podcast doesn't turn out a disaster. So the reason that I'm doing this episode today is that I received a comment in my YouTube video, in, a, in my YouTube channel. In my second podcast episode I did uh, some months ago and in all honesty I didn't record any more episodes since then and that's what uh, this commenter is saying. Uh, so he's uh, suggesting me to not script my podcasts and just press record and say whatever <laughs> I think I have to say in the podcast instead of scripting the episode and spending two hours for writing 3000 words and then speaking to the camera because that way I come out, uh, come out or come up. Anyway, I turn out to be more authentic by speaking my mouth, for speaking my mouth for speaking my mind out loud instead of uh, reading what I wrote beforehand. So let's try this. And besides, that was one of my regrets I had last summer when uh, on the very last day that we were here in Skiros, I tried to record such an episode in the backyard over there and I didn't, but I realized that I could have recorded a lot of videos here, since I have a lot of freedom, since I have all this yard around me to set up different setups anyway for podcast. And I didn't record anything. If at least I should have recorded the interview part of a video that I was going to publish about the 50 days of uh, summer that we spent in Skiros with my daughter last summer. Of course, I didn't create, I didn't produce that video ever. That's another regret. But that's another <laughs> work in progress, I guess. Another project that I might do sometime in the future. So this commenter said uh, to me that, uh, wrote to me, that I would come up, uh, that I would appear a lot more authentic. And that's what I'm trying here. So let's say the date, since I like to have dates in my episodes, to keep track of time, to keep track of history. I don't know why, but it's, uh, what's the date? It's Sunday, May the 5th, 2024. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was this thing that I'm going to try to make this podcast a bit more authentic. You tell me if I come out as authentic or I'm just fluffing around or I'm just mumbling around and adding fluff to the podcast that no one needs to hear this. So let's move on. Since we're on this topic, the disadvantage of me speaking to the camera without a script is that I'll have to spend a lot of time in editing. Although this guy, or I think it's a guy, uh, says to me that I won't be spending that much time in editing. I'll see about that when I'll edit this episode. Because when uh, you have a script, you are not expected to make a lot of mistakes. So I just start editing, cut five or ten uh, misspellings or five or ten uh, things I say wrong in, uh, when reading the script. Besides, I can't, how many mistakes can you make when you're reading a script? So editing doesn't take that much, but uh, here that I'm talking straight to the camera without uh, a script, I think it will, it will take me more time for editing, but I'll see. Another thing is that I record a lot more during this podcast, so uh, more gigabytes in the card, more gigabytes in the hard drives. So I'll need more space to store. I have a cut right here. So I'll need more space in the hard drives, which cost money. Of course, there's a solution to delete all the raw footage after I produce the podcast and save up the space. But I never delete anything from my hard drives, which I'm not so sure that's so efficient, but 
that's what I'm doing. Of course, the advantage of uh, making this podcast episode without a script is that I don't get to write anything. And I had these thoughts for quite some time now, since um, I was thinking that if I decide to write something, even for a podcast, why not make it a blog post? And uh, what's the point in uh, writing a blog post, if it's going to be a blog post, and then turn it into a podcast episode? Why have it in two places? Some would say that uh, you'll reach a different audience with a podcast episode and a different... (laughs) Well, that's what happens when you are in nature. You are surrounded by spiders, which I hate, like Indiana Jones. Or was it snakes that he was afraid of? Well, I'm afraid of spiders, in case you were wondering, where was I? So you'll reach a different audience having the blog post as a podcast via YouTube and a different audience who's going to read the script of the podcast. I tend to agree with that. That's why I published the script of the previous podcasts in my blog and uh, also published the podcast in my YouTube. But I didn't like writing, thinking that all this script is going to be a podcast episode because if I'm going to write, I like to write an article. I don't want to write something that I, I'm sure I'm going to tell to the, I'm going to say to the camera and uh, not speak freely like I'm doing now. And I don't, I mean, I'm certainly don't want to spend two hours writing for something that I'm going to be speaking to a camera. So this is a test. So Wadabiz, if you are watching this, thank you for the inspiration. I hope it turns out as you expected. I have already recorded 10 minutes, which I think will be cut down to probably five or six. Let's continue. Now, what I'm going to talk about in this episode. So let's move on and uh, and tell you what's going on lately since the last uh, upload in my YouTube channel. Since it has been about two weeks or three weeks since my last upload, I was aiming for making two videos per week. I managed that during the first three weeks. And then uh, we began planning uh, some trips. Uh, This is the second trip that I'm uh, on right now. We visited Paris last week, and this week we are in Skyros Island in Greece. I hope the spider left. People have been watching my latest videos about the Google updates and how I'm uh, having some troubles and some challenges in my business, in my web business. Since my main, uh, since the website that is my main money making uh, project has been losing some rankings in the Google search engine. And that's what I'm sharing about in the latest episodes in my YouTube, which have turned out to be the most popular videos I've made in my channel in the last 15 years or so. Let me get you up to speed of what's going on. So during the last uh, month or two months, I'm trying to recover the website from these Google updates. I've, uh, I want to make a lot of, I want to make more videos about the whole situation and show you how, what I'm doing specifically. And since I'm not uh, making these videos at this time, and I'm planning to, but it takes a lot of time to make them, I thought of uh, sharing of what I'm, of what? Mm-hmm. 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 Hello Siri. I'm speaking English that well, that Siri thought I was talking to her. Yeah, I'll probably delete this video, but anyway, I'll keep on speaking. Uh, so the ways I'm trying to recover the website is first, I had a meeting, I had a SEO agency, which uh, helped me in some regard to set up a plan about how to recover the website. I knew about 60 or 70% of what uh, the agency told me, But uh, the the SEO expert spent considerable time uh, on my website and found uh, 100 uh, suggestions and recommendations to make to the website so that it recovers. Uh, The agency doesn't think that I'm that, uh, that the website is uh, losing rankings because of the recent updates. And and it's more about uh, having ignored the content in the website. I have... uh, I had published 1,000 articles, but I have never updated them. So one of the things that uh, they told me was uh, to update these articles and uh, make 
make the content more helpful, in other words, which doesn't align that much with uh, the kind of advice I'm hearing from other SEO experts who suggest that you should be building more backlinks and that uh, your drop in rankings depends mostly because of losing authority. So on one hand, I have an SEO expert saying me that I have to create better content, that I have to focus to the, on the, I have to focus creating content for the user and not for the search engine. And on the other hand, there's another SEO school, study, whatever you want to call it, that um, thinks that uh, content is the last thing that uh, helps you rank, and that you should focus on authority and you build authority by building backlinks. I have never done link building in any of my websites and I have been uh, depending on uh, good content for other websites to link back to my websites, whatever that website is, since I have a lot of websites that, that I operate. But the website that is responsible for most of my revenue is the one that I'm trying to recover. So I don't, uh, in, I'm not involved in any backlinking. Oh, link backlink. I'm not involved in any link building strategy and uh, whatever links I have acquired for any of my websites is done via organic, uh, I don't know how it's called, it's because people like what they read in my websites and they link back genuinely without me asking them to. Uh, so since I have never involved, I have never done any uh, li link building, I'm not going to try to build links. And besides, I don't think I have lost authority in that website since uh, the Ahrefs uh, domain authority of my website hasn't dropped at all. And uh, I still get new backlinks every day. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure that the content isn't that good. And uh, how come that it's now that I've realized that? Well, in the past, I have uh, hired freelancers who have written uh, these thousand words, these thousand articles for the website. I used to read them, to check them for plagiarism, and generally not spend more than 10 minutes of reading them or proofreading them, and then publish uh, the articles on the website and be done with them. I didn't care that much of the content itself, uh, like what they wrote, if it was that correct, and most importantly, if the content was good enough compared to the competition. Since uh, uh, this whole story began with Google updates and my website dropping 70% of its traffic, I began spending a lot more time and caring for the content that was on my website for more than five years. And I found out that the content is bad. I didn't think it was that bad, but some articles I'm not sure why I paid uh, the money to the authors. Well, I didn't, well, well since the, the website had authority already and uh, I knew I didn't have that much, I don't have that much of competition for those keywords that the website is targeting. So whatever the uh, freelancers wrote about the keyword specific article, would uh, rank in the top three places of Google without me trying, not at all, but because of the website's domain name and because there wasn't that much competition, the articles would rank very easily and very quickly in the top three places of Google. But uh, if I was the user that was searching for that keyword in Google and landed in one of my articles, in one of the articles that, that the freelancers wrote for me, I would probably click back and visit another website, which tells Google that the, my content isn't that helpful. And the same, at the same time though, the other results weren't that good either. So anyway, in the meantime, other websites that turn out to be my main competitors nowadays have produced well done content and, uh, they, and they have uh, outranked my website justly, which is, which is justifiable by me. Although some of those articles or some of those websites use AI for creating that content. And that opens up another discussion. Should I use AI for producing the content or should I hire other freelancers, better freelancers to create better content? 
Now, there is a school of thought that you shouldn't use AI since the next update of Google will uh, punish those uh, websites that depend on AI to create content. On the other hand, Google itself has said that uh, it doesn't have any problem with uh, using AI as long as the content itself is useful for the end user. And another point for using AI is, of course, that my competitors do use AI for create content and they outrank me, which tells me that Google doesn't punish them. Although there is always a risk that Google might derank those websites. And if I use AI for creating content, I might run into that problem as well. However, since the website is losing traffic, which corresponds to, dro to revenue drop, I cannot afford that many freelancers to hire so that I have human written content. So I do use the help of AI to create that content and it's not new content, it's updating the old content with better content and with up-to-date info. And generally I, I'm trying to add a lot more helpful stats and data in articles that uh, didn't have any of those and were written in not so good English like I'm speaking right now. Uh, so it's a mix of uh, me editing, of AI coming up with new ideas, of using stats and data from other websites and combining all this together to create a more cohesive, uh, coherent, cohesive, I don't remember the word exactly, the a more good uh, result for the, for the final article. So at this point, and according to the SEO agency that uh, I hired, I should uh, focus on updating those articles because they are 1000 articles instead of creating new articles. And that's what I'm doing currently to recover the website. And another thing that I'm doing is uh, I began using Pinterest. I began sharing those articles on Pinterest, which I haven't done so in any of my websites. I also tried to share the content on Facebook and Twitter, but uh, I don't have that in order to grow there. Well, Facebook, I don't know how to grow on Facebook, but on Twitter, you have to reply. You have to be a reply guy and reply at least 100 uh, times a day so that your Twitter profile picks up. I, I started doing that for a couple of days, not as Jim, but as my other website uh, persona. But I found it very tiresome. I honestly don't think uh, it will have such an impact compared to me updating the content itself of the website. Now, Pinterest. Why Pinterest? I've read that Pinterest is another search engine that is uh, that other web publishers have seen good results in the past. And for some, traffic from Pinterest sometimes are responsible for over 20% of their traffic. But on Pinterest, you have to have images, original images. And that's another thing that I'm doing for the website, creating custom-made images for the website. And it's not photographs, it's illustrations, which uh, I bought an illustration from an agency. And based on that illustration, I can uh, edit the specific illustration for its, specific, for its different article, for its article, and create different illustrations depending on the keyword of its article. So I can come up with uh, four or five custom illustrations for each article. And those illustrations are the images that I'm sharing on Pinterest. So now the article, which, was, which used to be a bad article, is now a better written article, it has custom images in there, and is shared on Pinterest and sometimes Facebook and Twitter. Editing now the articles isn't just about creating better content. Okay, more spiders around me. Now editing the articles isn't just about writing the article, it's just is also removing internal links from the first three or four paragraphs, uh, not adding at, at all links in the first half of the content, having the custom image right in the beginning so that the visitor doesn't see just a block of text right from the start. I also change the title and add the updated 2024 in the title so that people know that uh, the article is recently updated. I also changed the published date to the updated date uh, when someone visits the article. 
Now, I've noticed that uh, from my competitors who have been using the date in their articles, and that's pretty much the whole plan, comparing the results from my competitors to my article, adding those structure to my articles, and then add even more data, info, and whatever I think is better for the article to my articles, so that they rank back to the first place. So that's what's going on with my website currently. Other things that are going on in my life is that uh, I'm trying to fight the anxiety that all this uh, struggle has brought into my life. And uh, the recent trips helped me in that regard, which, however, didn't help in my financials. Although the trip to Paris uh, was taken care of uh, Zoe, was taken care of by Zoe, who, who was saving up all the money that we, we spent on the trip, and we were quite frugal in that trip. Although Paris is an expensive city to travel to, and uh, we went to the Disneyland, we went to some museums, we wandered around, but we managed to not spend as much money as I thought we would spend. I'm planning to make a video, I already know the title of the video about that uh, Paris trip, but it will take time to edit the video since I recorded 2004 clips, time lapses, uh, clips with a 360 camera, anyway, a lot of footage that I've been organizing during the trip so that I know the scenes and the story that I'm going to tell. I already had a rough idea of what I'm going to talk about in the video, so I knew what uh, scenes I needed to shoot. But of course, I overshoot. I filmed a lot of stuff because that's what I like to do with my cameras. But this will be a problem when editing and it will take me a lot of time to finish this project. So some of you may have uh, questions about why I take a trip to Paris in the middle of all these financial uh, struggles that I'm facing with. Well, the trip was uh, arranged back in January when things weren't that bad, or at least I hadn't realized that things were going that bad. And uh, although I was reluctant at first to book the trip, I agreed because uh, I have uh, been saying Zoe no to trips for at least 10 years, so I thought it was about time to say yes. And uh, this uh, struggle that I'm facing in my web publishes, in, my, in my web publish business came in the worst time. So I couldn't uh, abandon the trip, although we, we did think of uh, not going to the trip and uh, lose a thousand uh, euros the, for the tickets that we had already booked in January. Yet my daughter was very excited to go to Paris. We had arranged the trip with another friend and it didn't feel right to cancel the trip at the last moment. And anyway, the trip went very well. Now I'm in Skiros Island for the Easter for a week. Of course, all this traveling and all this, uh, all this, uh, all this, how does, how do we say anakatosura in English, all this, uh, happenings, all these, uh, you know, not panic, all these um, events that take place during traveling doesn't help in me keeping organized and staying to, and stay, and to my schedule and staying faith to my plan, to my strategy. And so I fell back to my schedule of video producing. Now what else? Let me take a look at my notes. While I'm here in Skiros, I've recorded a couple of uh, scenes and uh, an interview or two, I think, I don't remember, uh, that I'm uh, discussing of what's going on here in Skiros, but uh, it's just scenes. I don't have a story to tell. I don't have a video plan for this trip to Skiros. So I've just recorded what's going on during these scenes in case I ever use them in a video. Now, another thing that I've noticed on YouTube during this first three weeks that I've, I'm uploading videos more regularly is that the comment system seems a little broken to me as I've been replying to almost every comment that I can but sometimes the comments from other people don't show up in the comment section below the, the video in question. I do see the comments in YouTube studio but the comments sometimes doesn't show up in the video itself. And the reason is because YouTube sorts the video by default by best comments. You have to, by top comments, you have to click on the sort, uh, on the three lines 
to pick uh, all comments instead of top comments so that all comments come up below the video. This uh, has led to some people uh, complaining to me that uh, they wrote uh, a very insightful comment and they rightfully and they did so and uh, I thanked them for them but uh, then they saw that uh, they couldn't find their own comment and they told me come on uh, I wrote uh, such a good comment and I can't see it anywhere what's the point of me adding value to your comment section I can't do anything about that other than raising awareness for this fact and another thing is that I, I, when I reply to some comments via YouTube Studio uh, the, my reply doesn't tag the other guy, the comment, the commentator. But when I reply them on the video itself, in the comment section of each video, by the time I tap on the reply button, the I tag the, the, the YouTube system comes up with uh, at sign, adds the username, and then I can reply. So the other uh, person knows that I have replied to them. But when I reply using the YouTube Studio, my reply doesn't tag them. So I don't know if people know that I have replied to them. Anyway, the, I think the best uh, I think the best comment system right now is on Twitter or X, however you want to call it. And hopefully YouTube will sometime learn from this. Now, what else? How much have I recording for? 37 minutes. Okay, maybe this episode will be about 20 minutes, hopefully. Now this, um, I'm looking at my notes now. Now the notes that I'm taking is a big Notion template where I have everything from my thoughts to blog posts, to YouTube scripts, to podcast scripts, to letters that I send to my subscribers, to scripts for shorts, for reels. Anyway, everything is here. And uh, the uh, notes that I'm seeing right now are title test posts because these thoughts uh, usually make it to my X, to my Twitter feed as I tend to share these thoughts first on X and then turn them into blog posts or YouTube videos or combine all these thoughts into one blog post or into a newsletter. But because it takes a lot of time to combine all this and find the time to write and produce the videos, I'm right now reading those notes, those thoughts that I had during all those days and if you see the notes this is April 7, 1, 2, April 12, 2 notes, April 21, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 notes or thoughts, whatever comes to my mind at any time during the day, I take a note in this notion with a plan of sharing this uh, thought on Twitter. Uh, so my original YouTube plan was to make 10 videos per month of 100 views each so that I had uh, 10, 10, 1,000 uh, views every month and uh, one year my goal was to keep making 10 videos a month that are viewed by 10,000 people each so instead of 100 views each so I wanted after one year to have uh, videos uploaded to YouTube that get watched by 10,000 people each video that would make for 100,000 views every month which would make me about $500 because I have to diversify my income right now since I realized that I have to, well, I did know that I have to diversify my income, but I haven't done so because I was living in my comfort zone until I was shocked that that comfort zone can be very easily disrupted. So that was my YouTube plan. Well, my YouTube plan is to make two videos a week, about eight videos a month, at this time, these videos have uh, been viewed by more than a thousand people each, or two thousand sometimes. Uh, so my first goal is achieved, but uh, I don't feel that good having stopped uploading for three weeks now. Uh, yes, this was another idea I had about my video workflow, and we'll wrap up the, this podcast with this. Uh, I had the idea of uh, creating long-form videos based on popular articles so that I first write an article or write many articles and uh, at the end of the month see which articles perform the better and then make uh, long form videos around those articles knowing that uh, the popularity was confirmed. I was inspired for this strategy by Alex Hormozzi who tweets 
many things during a week or two weeks and then the next month they see which tweets perform the best and uh, then he creates four long-form videos based on those four popular tweets and short-form uh, content like reels based on those tweets since they already know that the audience like those tweets so that's what I thought about writing first uh, many articles and then create videos only for those articles but uh, I don't see me following that strategy as you can see since I'm creating videos for YouTube without blog posts first and another thing that I noticed is that uh, having uh, videos about a specific topic that I know people already are searching like it was uh, the cast runaway the most recent video I think I uploaded before the documentary in a single day video uh, that people since they are uh, searching for that keyword cast runaway I came up with a script focused on cast runaway and I told a story around that keyword and I think it's evergreen content although it tells a story that's currently unfolding in my life the previous video also had a key, was a keyword uh, targeted video which focused on Google updates a very generic uh, keyword of course but uh, at least I have a specific topic and keyword to talk about and have a story to tell about that keyword now since I, you are seeing me here or you are listening to my podcast here I didn't have a story for this podcast so I recorded this without a plan or without a keyword and uh, this episode is all over the place but at least I hope I'm authentic so tell me what you think in the comments below or if you are listening to this on a podcast platform uh, you can leave me a comment in the YouTube or sign up to my newsletter and find out my email address and send me an email address okay it's time consuming so leave me a comment in the YouTube bye